Hello, my name is Larry Lapidus. I'm with uh, Empiris. And I'm going to talk today about RISC-V models for verification, architecture exploration, and software development. So just as a, a reminder about RISC-V, uh, RISC-V is an open architecture and it's this freedom and not the free, uh, which is why RISC-V usage is growing so fast. So to use RISC-V, high quality RISC-V models are uh, required. And there are these three use cases. One is architectural uh, analysis, including or especially uh, custom instructions. There is software development, debug and test, and also processor and SOC verification. Anyone can. Many of you probably have built your own instruction set simulator. The uh, ISS is sometimes viewed as a commodity item uh, because everyone has built one, but really more than an instruction set simulator is needed for RISC-V success. So just a bit of background on uh, Empiris. Uh, the Empiris uh, founding team has a background in EDA uh, and also FPGA and processor IP companies. So for myself personally, I ran worldwide sales at Vericity with the Specman tool uh, for about five years. Uh, so I've got a bit of background there. Uh, the idea uh, with Empiris was that we were going to take uh, some of this discipline some of this methodology that we had with EDA and apply that on the software side. And so uh, we wanted to have test and analysis tools for software that ran on a software simulation environment. And this is somewhat similar to uh, System C and there are some other tools, but what we did was to uh, uh, state the requirements for our tools first and then build the simulation and modeling infrastructure underneath that. So doing so, we needed high quality models of the embedded processors of ARM and uh, MIPS and Renesas and PowerPC. Uh, so in 2007, we started the company, we self-funded uh, the company. We're still uh, completely self-funded uh, and we got going. But then in 2016, RISC-V uh, came along and we knew uh, that the RISC-V uh, community would need models and virtual platform tools for software development. We also uh, began to realize that those RISC-V models would also be needed for compliance and verification and architecture exploration. And so we started working with the organizations like RISC-V International and Open Hardware Group. We started working with uh, customers uh, like Codasip, like MIPS as they uh, transitioned from the old MIPS architecture to RISC-V uh, with companies like NVIDIA Networking, uh, Mellanox, uh, and we uh, started building methodology for uh, processor verification and working on these RISC-V models. What we've seen is, is evolution in the uh, demand from the RISC-V community. So it's critical to be able to build RISC-V models, including adding custom instructions and being able to use those for processor verification, software development, and architecture exploration. Now what we see is that uh, nearly every RISC-V project is using Empiris RISC-V models. Here's a bit of a timeline of Empiris and uh, RISC-V. I don't want to go into detail on this. Uh, you can go back and watch the video and uh, look, look at this in more detail. But just a, a few points. Um, you know, we, we built our uh, first model uh, six years ago for RISC-V. We had our first paying customer uh, about five years ago. First tape out uh, of a SOC uh, that used the Empiris model for DV was about four years ago. And over the last few years, uh, we've been working on, uh, on various things, um, uh, mostly focused on DV. If we look at our customers and, uh, and partners, uh, we've got a nice list of uh, customers here. 
Uh, we're working with most of the uh, RISC-V processor IP vendors. We've also got tool vendors uh, that we work with. Uh, so there, there's quite a bit of collaboration and partnership. And three things I'll point out uh, here. One is that we've been working with various government projects, especially in uh, Japan. We work with numerous universities around the world uh, with RISC-V. And lastly, we provide a free uh, uh, model and, and simulator, RISC-V OVP Sim Plus. And there are over 100 organizations that are using this free uh, model and simulator. So let's get into the model uh, a bit. This is the basic structure of the model. There is a base reference model uh, implementing the full RISC-V specification. This can be configured uh, for different extensions and versions. And then there is an extension library for custom instructions and uh, CSRs. So what does this get used for? Gets used for processor verification. So here we have uh, the RTL for the RISC-V processor. Here we have Empiris uh, reference model and verification IP. And then it also gets used for software development and architecture exploration in a virtual platform. And this is the Empiris virtual platform environment. So I'm going to talk about all three of these areas, the models, verification, and software development and architecture exploration. So let's jump in here and talk about the model requirements. So of course, you need to model the complete instruction set architecture, including all versions of the ratified spec and all stable unratified uh, extensions. So right now, uh, for example, we, uh, we model, I think, four different uh, versions of the vector uh, specification because it has been stable at those four points and we have had customers that have implemented uh, the vector spec at all uh, those stable versions, but also the stable unratified extensions. Uh, so for example, uh, vector crypto uh, is, is now stable. We have one customer that's doing an implementation of that and we have added that into our model. You need to be able to model other behavioral components, for example, interrupt controllers need to be able to easily integrate and configure the models for the next project. Uh, needs to be user extendable for the custom registers. Need to be able to model actual processor IP if you're starting from that uh, point. There needs to be a well-defined uh, test process for the models, including coverage uh, metrics and mutation testing. There needs to be an interface to other simulators, whether it's System Verilog on the DV side or System C or, or Empiris virtual platform simulators for software development. Needs to be able to interface to software debug tools, to software analysis tools, uh, to architecture exploration tools. Uh, most RISC-V instruction set simulators can meet one or two of these requirements, but Empiris models and simulators were built to satisfy the complete range of requirements and matured through usage on non-RISC-V uh, ISAs over the last 15 plus years. So you can use another, another instruction set simulator, another reference model. If you're starting from something open source, you're probably going to have to fork that off and maintain it yourself. That's a lot of extra work. Uh, and here we've got something uh, that works out of the box for you. With those models, again, we're supporting the three use cases. We're supporting the full uh, specification. We have models of the processor IP vendors and models for developers building their own uh, RISC-V processor. The custom instructions are easily added by users or by uh, Empiris. And uh, again, those new instructions are added in a side file so as not to perturb the verified uh, model. That base model gets used in all of our RISC-V models. And so well over 100 users use that base model uh, and it, it gets, gets beaten up on, it gets tested 
uh, on, a, on a daily basis. The models are built using a test-driven development methodology. The tests are built at the same time as features are added. Uh, there's a continuous integration flow with uh, actually closer to 20,000 tests now for Models Plus Simulator. Um, and there's additional testing by the processor IP vendors uh, for those models uh, to validate those as uh, reference models. This is the basic structure uh, of the um, uh, of the Empiris Open Virtual Platforms Fast Processor Model. Uh, there's not too much uh, to uh, to say about this, except that we're supporting uh, full uh, the full Risk V specification and uh, this this structure and the APIs used to uh, build these processor models are not just used for Risk V, but We've used these uh, for ARM, for MIPS, for Renaissance, for uh, I think uh, now 15 different instruction set architectures. Uh, so it's, it's quite a bit here. The models are uh, built in C using these OVP APIs. And then the APIs are supported by uh, the OVP sim simulator and Empiris commercial uh, simulators. All models have both C and system C interfaces. The models are available under the Apache 2.0 open source license. The models do require a simulator to run, but one license is all that's needed for multi-core and many-core platforms. And there's a link here for uh, more information on the RISC-V models. So back to the models uh, and especially uh, the extensibility. So here's this. Uh, model architecture. It's running on the uh, Empiris simulator engine. Again, we're supporting the full uh, base model, fully configurable to select extensions, uh, versions, but now we can add custom instructions. We Empiris can add or users can add because we've got templates, we've got code fragments, we've got documentation uh, that makes it easy to do this. So just talking about the custom instructions, there's a flow for this. In, in RISC-V, custom instructions are typically added to optimize a specific application or set of applications within a domain. So the first thing to do is start by characterizing the application to be optimized and then add the custom instructions and evaluate and iterate. So we're going to uh, do that, characterize that application, um, when we do that, uh, we do profiling, we see that there's a significant amount of time in this process line uh, function. So we're just using profiling, similar to uh, GProf, but actually this is built into the Empiris uh, simulation environment. And so there's no instrumentation of the, uh, of the source code that's necessary. So now we can design uh, the new instructions, add these to the application, add them to the model, and we're going to redo the analysis. And we see that we've actually reduced the time in the process line uh, function from 21% to uh, less than 15%. So well, we've made some uh, improvements in the functionality uh, here by adding custom instructions. And there is a whole flow on this. We do uh, iterate on the custom instructions, but then we can actually optimize and document the model, uh, test the model, uh, use instruction coverage and line coverage, automatically generate documentation, and then release and deploy the model. So what are we going to do with this? We're going to use this model for verification. So there are uh, four key pieces here on the verification side. One is the uh, reference model. Second is the verification IP, uh, which is in both C and system C. Third piece is the RVVI RISC-V verification interface standard, which provides communication between the uh, RTL test bench and the uh, uh, reference model subsystem. And then the fourth is that we've recently added 
functional coverage verification IP. So there's now a functional coverage uh, module here. So what we're doing is taking these four components, the reference models, the verification IP, the functional coverage, the interface, um, and this enables a, an asynchronous step and compare DB flow, very comprehensive uh, DB flow for the RISC-V processors. So on that last slide, uh, I mentioned that uh, functional coverage was a, a feature that was recently added to our uh, verification offering. So let's just look at the scope of what's going on with functional coverage. If we look at just uh, the 64-bit uh, specification for RISC-V, uh, we've got a large number of, uh, of instructions, uh, especially if we add in uh, vectors, if we add in uh, the DSP. So that's nearly a thousand instructions for, um, for the RV64 processors. And for functional coverage, each instruction needs system Verilog cover groups and cover points. There's 10 to 40 lines of system Verilog for each instruction, depending upon what's going on there. That means there's 10,000 to 40,000 or more lines of code to be written for functional coverage. That's a lot. And that doesn't even go into uh, doing cross coverage. So right now what we're uh, able to do is uh, add this for instructions and operands, and we'll be adding this for CSRs and data hazards in the next few months. So just looking at this again, here's that basic block diagram. Here's the functional coverage. Uh, so this is the RVVI trace. There's this traced cov uh, verification IP, and this produces these functional coverage uh, modules. So we actually have a tool that generates this automatically. So we're providing functional coverage of instructions and, uh, and operands. And the roadmap in includes the CSRs and data hazards. But the other thing is that the Imperius tools can automatically generate functional coverage code for custom instructions. Uh, so that's actually a pretty nice benefit as well. So what does that look like here? Functional coverage is the key verification uh, metric. And this is just some of the generated uh, code. This is uh, a coverage report from uh, Cadence Accelium uh, for one of the compliance tests. And we see the, the RISC-V ISACOV and, and the rest of our uh, verification uh, tools work with any of these system Verilog uh, simulators. So an, an interesting uh, point here, as we add uh, functional coverage and we talk about functional coverage as the key verification metric, actually uh, going back to my days in, uh, in Vericity, uh, functional coverage was something built into the SpecMan tool from the very beginning, but it was not, it was not easy for customers to uh, to adopt functional coverage. It wasn't necessarily an intuitive thing. Uh, and, and then uh, an engineer at Intel in Israel, Akiva Mickelson, uh, presented a paper at, uh, at a conference, probably in 2000, uh, I believe it was. Uh, and he uh, showed graphs on how uh, functional coverage uh, increased and got uh, close to functional coverage closure. And at the same time, the number of bugs that uh, they were finding decreased. And they had um, showed that data, showed that they had uh, successful uh, tape out, that first silicon came back uh, correct and uh, booted up. And with that public presentation, there was now uh, a real use case, uh, credibility, uh, for functional coverage as uh, as a key verification metric. So, um, uh, Akiva, if you're in the audience today, thank you very much uh, for the uh, for really providing the initial backing uh, publicly for functional coverage. So, 
We talked about uh, RISC-V processor design verification. Now, uh, getting back to the virtual platforms, uh, uh, the virtual platform gets used for software development and for architecture analysis. So here, uh, actually, what we have are three key components. Again, we have the processor models uh, in here. Um, then we have the simulator engine. So in, in verification, we also have the simulator engine, but actually the performance of the um, uh, of the simulator engine that's driving the model doesn't really matter because the RTL uh, simulation performance is going to be the gating factor. But here we're looking for as much uh, speed in simulation as we can get, and this simulation engine actually does matter a lot. So with, uh, with the Empiris simulation engine, the Empiris environment, we're able to achieve hundreds of millions of instructions per second performance. But what this does is to enable comprehensive testing of many, many scenarios, which is what you want to do with the, with the simulation environment uh, with the virtual platform. So there are the processor models, there's the simulator engine, and there are also the, the tools. There's a multi-processor, uh, multi-core uh, debugger that we uh, provide here. Certainly you can use something like GDB. Uh, but uh, there are advantages to the Empiris debugger. These advantages are the fact that the Empiris debugger is a platform-centric, not processor-centric. So within the same uh, debug window, you can actually look at not just uh, one processor, but all your processors, whether they be uh, homogeneous or heterogeneous, but also you have the capability with this debugger of introspection into the uh, uh, into the peripheral models, for example, setting breakpoints on uh, registers in peripherals. And then we also have these tools, what we call the software verification analysis and profiling tools or VAP tools. So there's tracing, not just instruction tracing, but also function and variable tracing. And actually with the OS aware capabilities, uh, we also have OS uh, aware tracing so that uh, you can uh, trace tasks at the uh, at the OS level, for example. There's also, as I mentioned before, there's uh, profiling and code coverage tools and memory monitoring, a uh, number of other things, including uh, fault injection. So the, the virtual platforms provide the ability to uh, execute the production binaries. So you're not compiling your code to x86 and then just hoping that it behaves the same on uh, your RISC-V processor as it does on x86. You're actually running the, the same execu executables uh, as you would on the hardware. The virtual platform also provides controllability observability, determinism, uh, so, and then ease of automation, ease of delivery, ease of maintenance. Um, there's also the shift left uh, piece of this. So uh, being able to start your software development uh, early uh, and hopefully uh, this is going to reduce your critical path. And the performance is, uh, is key here. So the virtual platforms, are a uh, must have for any software, any system of any complexity or with systems that have quality, reliability, safety, security uh, requirements. In terms of complexity, let me just give uh, one, uh, one quick example. We have one customer that is building a data center uh, plugin card. Uh, actually the, uh, the SOC for that uh, uses uh, nearly 150 RISC-V processors. There are uh, microcontrollers for managing the SOC. There is an application processor for doing uh, load management, workload balance. Um, and, and then there is an array of processors that are uh, the AI inference engine. And the Empiris virtual platform supports all that. Uh, and to, and it, all, uh, it all works. They ran this for about 18 months before First Silicon came back, and then it came right up uh, in the lab in a matter of days. Just to uh, sum up here, successful RISC-V projects need 
uh, high quality risk five models a risk five instruction set simulator can get you started but a real risk five model plus a simulator is needed for real risk five projects for architecture exploration including custom features for software development debug and test for processor ip design verification the empiris ovp fast processor models satisfy these risk five project requirements thank you very much <laughs>